everybody, I'm Melanie Knight. If you are in high school and you are looking to become a marine biologist, this video is for you. I have been getting emails from different folks around the world asking questions about how to become a marine biologist and specifically when they're in high school, how do they kind of get ahead? How do they, uh, what can they be doing while they're in high school to ensure that they are at the top of the pile when they are applying to universities and looking to figure out how they can optimize their high school experience to better position themselves and prepare themselves for their career in marine biology. Okay, here are my five top tips for high school students looking to become a marine biologist. Tip number one is to take math and science courses. I know this can be tough because for some of you, math and science doesn't come easily. And frankly, I'm in the same boat. I also struggled with those courses when I was in high school, but as soon as I figured out that I was gonna become a marine biologist and decided to focus on that alone and apply that knowledge, like apply that drive and excitement to my high school studies, I really got better. If you are gonna be going to university, which is the fastest track to becoming a marine biologist, you will definitely need good grades in these key courses. Do whatever you can to excel in those courses, whether it be to get a tutor, find a study group, and study hard, dedicate the time. I remember having to work really hard in high school. I remember having to take extra credit courses in the summer and at night. If it's hard for you, I get it. And keep working at it. You've got this. These concepts aren't impossible. They're actually really relevant for the work you're going to be doing. So keep that in mind and uh, keep working at it. The courses that you wanna be taking are the ones that your university requires. So for mo many of you, it's gonna be at least two math courses, so a calculus and maybe an algebra. And for science, it's pretty much gonna be all of them. It's gonna be physics, biology, and chemistry, um, and maybe others, depending on the university that you're applying to. Okay, tip number two is that you need to talk to your teachers and guidance counselors about your goals. As soon as I realized that I wanted to be a marine biologist, I walked directly into my guidance counselor's office and I asked him, how can I become a marine biologist? And he had never gotten that question before because I was living in landlocked Ontario. And he said, well, let's look it up. Let's figure it out together. He was very helpful. We ended up looking up some university catalogs. There was one school that specifically had a program called Oceanography. And I was like, that sounds amazing. That's kind of what, that's what I want to do. And that school was Memorial University of Newfoundland. So right then and there, we looked up what my grade point average needed to be. I looked up what courses are, the requirements were, and I looked up kind of what the cost associated with that university was. And I got down to business. I was so motivated. And I really hope that if you are able to have that, if you have that same interest and same drive, and you find that university that you really wanna to go to, you will make that your mission and vision and you will go for it. Cause that's really sometimes what it takes. So then I knew exactly what my target was. I knew what grades I needed to get. I knew what courses I needed to take. And I also knew how much money I needed to save. When I talked to my teachers, I said, I wanna become a marine biologist. Can I do a project that has to do with the oceans? when I was doing a world issues course or when I was doing a physics problem and they were really helpful. And I really hope that your teachers would be the same. You yourself can do this as well if your teachers don't have the capacity or time. Again, teachers have a really hard job. Um, I can't expect them to do this for every single student. And so if they can't do that for you, totally understood. It's up to you then to figure out how to relate this information that you're learning to what it is that you're gonna be doing in marine biology in the future. Use your creativity, use your imagination, use the internet, use books and resources, uh, talk to your friends and family, talk to your teachers and guidance counselors to see how you can better relate the information that you're learning to what you want to be applying it to in the future in the marine field. Okay, tip number three is watch and read everything you can about the oceans. So because of the internet and all of the resources that it has available to you, I would highly recommend that you look up scientists and explorers that live in your country. So for here in Canada, there are hundreds. There are some that I have really started loving following, both on their social media and on their reading their books and things like that. Someone like this. You gotta read her book. Okay, Into the Planet. I should do an actual full book review on this because she is incredible. Jill Heinarth, totally look up Jill and others like her who are doing incredible work with our oceans and and have book and resources. They've told you all of their most amazing knowledge right here in the book. Read what whatever you can and look up interesting scientists that are in your region. Tip number four is volunteer. I cannot stress this enough. Volunteer wherever you can. Find an organization that you like or that you're interested in, in your region, with anything that has to do with water. Anything, honestly. It could be fresh water, it could be rivers, it could be streams, it could be salmon, it could be something in regards to coral reefs or an aquarium 
anything that you can get your hands on that you can physically go to and volunteer. I know we're in a very strange time right now where COVID kind of limits our ability to interact personally, but that won't be on forever. Hopefully this is gonna end soon. And in the meantime, reaching out to those organizations and starting to build a relationship with them so that when the volunteer opportunities do come up in person again, then you will be right there and available for that next volunteer intake. I've mentioned this in other videos as well about how to volunteer, even if there are no volunteer opportunities in your community, you can simply lead your own. So that would be leading your own shoreline cleanup. It could be leading your own uh, citizen science project. It could be making art and doing something that would kind of initiate a group of people to come together to do something that would help the oceans. So whatever it might be in your um, creative brain that you can come up with that would initiate a volunteer opportunity for you to take the lead, try something new, do something fun with your friends together that would help the planet, that is exactly the type of stuff that will help build up your resume, help build up your, your credentials so that when you're applying to universities, they will see that you've taken the initiative. Not only is it great resume building, but honestly, it is a really great experience that you will absolutely pull from throughout the rest of your life. Okay, tip number five, final tip, is that you need to get in or on the water as often as possible. This means swimming, snorkeling, diving, maybe free diving, stand up paddle boarding. It means getting on a boat, cruising along the shoreline wherever you can and exploring the water's edge. Being able to have that type of experience on the water, that is really where you where you learn, where you get to understand like animal behavior, how tides and, and waves work, um, what to look out for when you're um, when you're in the intertidal zone and how to tell the difference between different barnacles or periwinkles or something like that. You know, that is the experience that you're only gonna get when you go down and you explore for yourself. So those are my top five tips for today. I highly encourage you to do your best in school, talk to your teachers, volunteer, read and watch as much as you can and get out on the water, get out to see that ocean wherever you can. If you were landlocked like me in high school and you didn't have access to the ocean, try your best to get to the ocean wherever you can. I remember I took a trip when I was 15 years old out to go surfing and it was really what changed my life. Um, I also talked to a freshwater biologist that lived in my community and he took me to the river and explained how um, fish ladders worked. So all those types of experiences really helped uh, build my knowledge and build my experience um, even when I was in a landlocked environment. Keep with it, stay with it. Um, more videos are to come. Happy New Year, everyone. The comments, unfortunately, are disabled because right now I have a kid's account because I want these videos to be available for kids on YouTube. So if you have any questions for me, feel free to email me at marinebiologymel at gmail.com. Also, I just started a new Instagram account called marinebiologymel, and you can also find me there and ask me questions if you like. All right, all the best. Thanks, everybody.